Hello everyone. So in our today's video, we are going to be discussing about the stages of cellular respiration. So in our previous lecture, I have already discussed about what is respiration. So respiration is the process by which the glucose is going to be broken down in order to release energy. Okay. So what is cellular respiration? Cellular respiration means it is the breakdown of glucose inside the cell so that energy is going to be released. So as the respiration is taking inside the cell, it is therefore known as cellular respiration. Alright. So there are three stages which are there in the process of cellular respiration. The first one is glycolysis. Second is Krebs cycle. And the third and the most important stage of cellular respiration is the electron transport chain. Now let's discuss about the first stage of cellular respiration which is glycolysis. The word glyco means glucose. And lysis means splitting. So during this process of glycolysis, what is happening is the glucose molecule is going to be broken down. Alright. So or in other words, the glucose molecule is going to be splitted. So where is this glycolysis going to take place in the cell? So in the cell, glycolysis is going to take place in the cytoplasm. During glycolysis, Glucose which is a 6 carbon compound. So I hope you remember the chemical formula of glucose. C6 H12O6 is the chemical formula of glucose. So this glucose which is a 6 carbon compound is going to be broken down into pyruvic acid. Is going to be broken down into pyruvic acid which is actually a 3 carbon compound. Okay. So one molecule of glucose which is a 6 carbon compound is going to be broken down into pyruvic acid which is a 3 carbon compound. And glycolysis is a common step for both aerobic as well as anaerobic respiration. Okay. So I hope you understood what is glycolysis. Now let's go on to the next stage of cellular respiration which is Krebs cycle. Krebs cycle takes place in the inner mitochondrial matrix. Okay. So I hope you remember what is matrix. Matrix is nothing but the space which is there inside the mitochondria which is filled with enzymes, ribosomes and all those things. So inside the matrix only Krebs cycle is going to be taking place. So what happens during Krebs cycle is the pyruvic acid, the pyruvic acid or pyruvate which was produced during the process of glycolysis is going to be oxidized. So what is the meaning of oxidation? Oxidation means oxygen molecules are going to add up to the pyruvic acid. So that is only known as oxidation. So during the process of Krebs cycle, the pyruvic acid is going to be oxidized to release carbon dioxide and water. Okay. Krebs cycle is also called as tricarboxylic acid cycle. Or it is also called as the citric acid cycle. Now let's go on to the last stage of cellular respiration which is the electron transport chain. This stage is very much important because during the electron transport chain only the synthesis of the energy currency adenosine triphosphate or the ATP is going to take place. So let's see what happens during the electron transport chain. Electron transport chain occurs in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Okay. So before we go on to the electron transport chain, there are two very important compounds which we need to discuss. The first one is NADH 
and the second one is FADH2. So what is this NADH? NADH is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. And what is this FADH2? FADH2 is flavin adenine dinucleotide. So why am I telling that these two compounds are important? Okay, so these two compounds are important because these compounds are only going to produce the electrons or it is only going to donate the electron for the electron transport chain to begin. So, from the name of the process itself, you can identify that the electrons are going to be transported. So, which part is going to actually produce the electrons? It is these two compounds which is NADH and FADH2. So, where is this NADH and where is this FADH2 coming from? These two compounds are coming from the process of glycolysis and Krebs cycle. So during the process of glycolysis and Krebs cycle, NADH and FADH2 are released, which is then being utilized in the process of electron transport chain to donate electrons. Okay, so I hope you understood why NADH and FADH2 are important. So now let's take up what happens during the process of electron transport chain. So I've told you already that the electron transport chain is going to take place in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So now let's see how it is going to happen. So this is the matrix. Okay. And this is the inner mitochondrial membrane. This is the outer mitochondrial membrane. In between the outer mitochondrial membrane and the inner mitochondrial membrane, there is going to be a space. And this space which is present in between the outer mitochondrial membrane and the inner mitochondrial membrane is called as the intermembrane space. The inner mitochondrial membrane consists of four sets of enzyme complexes. So, I am just drawing it in random shapes. Okay. The NADH and the FADH2 are going to donate electrons to these four sets of enzyme complexes. So, what these electrons are going to do is that it is going to travel along the enzyme complexes. So, when the electrons are traveling along the enzyme complexes, energy is going to be generated. So, with the help of the energy which is generated during the electron transport, hydrogen ions which are present in the inner mitochondrial matrix will be pumped into the intermembrane space. So, there is going to be more and more of hydrogen ions which are getting pumped into the intermembrane space. So, at one point of time, what is going to happen is, there is going to be a positive charge in the intermembrane space and a negative charge in the mitochondrial matrix. So, why is a positive charge there in the intermembrane space? Because there is more and more accumulation of hydrogen ions taking place there. So, this is leading to a positive charge in the intermembrane space and a negative charge in the mitochondrial matrix. Actually, the mitochondrial matrix also needs the hydrogen ions. So, what has to happen is by the process called as chemiosmosis. So, I will write that for you now. So, by the process called chemiosmosis. The hydrogen ions which are there in the intermembrane space will be pumped back into the mitochondrial matrix. So, as there are more amount of hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space, it is going to be pumped back into the matrix by the process called as chemiosmosis. So, why is it called chemiosmosis? Because hydrogen ion is a chemical ion. 
So as it is involving the movement of hydrogen ions, which is a chemical ion from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration, it is therefore known as chemiosmosis. So I hope you remember when I explain about the structure of the mitochondria, there I have told that the inner mitochondrial membrane is actually a semi-permeable membrane. So here, this inner mitochondrial membrane is going to act as a semi-permeable membrane through which the hydrogen ions is going to move from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. Okay, so I hope you understood what is chemiosmosis. But here, there is one more thing that we have to notice. The inner mitochondrial membrane is actually not permeable to ions. Okay, so in order to overcome the problem, there has to be one enzyme which is coming into action which is ATP synthase. Okay, so ATP synthase is important because with the help of the ATP synthase only hydrogen ions can get into the mitochondrial matrix. Why? Because this inner mitochondrial membrane which is a semi-permeable membrane is not permeable to ions. Okay, so ATP synthase has to come into play so that hydrogen ions is brought back into the inner mitochondrial matrix. Now, once the hydrogen ions moves back into the inner mitochondrial matrix, what is going to happen? The most important step, which is synthesis of ATP is going to take place. So, what's happening? ATP synthase is going to bring the hydrogen ions into the mitochondrial matrix. So, with the help of the hydrogen ions, what is going to happen is ADP. What is ADP? ADP is adenosine diphosphate. ADP is going to be phosphorylated to form ATP, which is our energy currency. What is the meaning of phosphorylation? So, phosphorylation is the process by which phosphate group is going to be added to a molecule. That is only called as phosphorylation. So, here with the help of hydrogen ions which is getting pumped from the intermembrane space into the mitochondrial matrix, ADP which is adenosine diphosphate is going to be phosphorylated and it is going to be producing adenosine triphosphate which is the energy currency. Okay. So, let us go through this once again. So, what is happening? NADH and FADH2 which are produced during the process of Krebs cycle and glycolysis is going to donate the electrons to a set of enzyme complexes which are there in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So, the electron transport chain process is going to take place in the inner mitochondrial membrane only. So, there are four sets of enzyme complexes which are there in the inner mitochondrial membrane and the electrons which was donated is going to travel along these four sets of enzyme complexes. So, when it is traveling along these four sets of enzyme complexes, energy is going to be generated. So, with the help of the energy generated by the electron transport, hydrogen ions, hydrogen ions which are present in the inner mitochondrial matrix is going to be pumped into the intermembrane space. So, when there is going to be more and more accumulation of hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space, it is going to leave this intermembrane space with a positive charge and the inner mitochondrial matrix with a negative charge. So, the hydrogen ions are needed even in the mitochondrial matrix. So, what is going to happen is, this hydrogen ions are going to move into the mitochondrial matrix by the process known as chemiosmosis. So, what is chemiosmosis? movement of hydrogen ions from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. So, the semi-permeable membrane here is the inner mitochondrial membrane and this inner mitochondrial membrane is not permeable to ions. So, ATP synthase helps in bringing the hydrogen ions from the intermembrane space into the inner mitochondrial matrix. So, once the hydrogen ions have started moving into the inner mitochondrial matrix with the help of this hydrogen ions, ADP, what is ADP? Adenosine diphosphate is going to be phosphorylated to form adenosine triphosphate. 
which is the energy currency of living organisms. Okay, so this is how our glucose is getting converted into ATP molecule. So I hope you understood the topic very well. This question, stages of cellular respiration, is a very important question for your board exam point of view. Okay, so I hope you understood the topic very clearly. If you have any doubts, you can leave that in the comment section below. Thank you.